What's going on guys and welcome to Marketing English with Abby once again. Super glad that you're here. Today I'm going to share some of my experiences and the topic is also interesting. Before that I want to give you a pre-story and how I chose this lesson. See, when I first started learning English, the most difficult part was the grammar. I know some words but I don't know how to put them together. But the grammar is easy because if you really give it time, you can master it. There are only like 20-30 rules to learn. But after that, you have to work on your vocabulary. I didn't have enough words. So I, I like to paraphrase and use many words to say simple things. But again, I got better at it. But the third one, and what I'm having problem with right now, is I know every word they say, but when I put them together, it doesn't give me any meaning. The first one, it says mouth to feet. I know what mouth is, to feet, but what does it mean? It's very difficult for me to understand. I hope it is for you too. So these are expressions and we don't translate them directly. Then uh, what makes it worse or what makes this lesson so important is the natives, they're full of expressions. They use a lot of expressions. But we, the people that speak English as a second language, our English is so mechanical. It's just direct, but they use a short way and then boom. They say a lot. So uh, to avoid those confusions and to even tell you how the words came to be, what they appear to be or give the meanings they do, I'm going to tell you the pre-story, which is the, the etymology of the words. Without further ado, let's dive in. As you can see, the topic says uh, how they really say it. Who are they? They are the Americans, the people that, that speak the language. All these expressions are American expressions. So how they really say it and how we say it. So. If I am someone, so the first one, if I am someone who has a lot of responsibility, maybe kids and people that depend on me, maybe I could say, well, uh, no, life is not easy for me. I have to work very hard because I have uh, many people to support. I have many people to support. That's good. But uh, you could hear an American say, I have mouth to feed. I have mouth to feed, plural, mouse. I have mouth to feed, okay? So what is mouth is this, right? So I have mouth to feed means I have a lot of people to support, that's it. I got mouth to feed. So how many people do you have to support? I could say, how many mouths do you have to feed? Okay, how many mouths do you have to feed? Before, before my research, I thought it was mouse to feed because when you make a plural, you know, it kind of, it sounds like you're saying mouse, which is a rat, no, mice, mouse. So, but no, it's mouths to feed. I actually have the same thing, the same story. Uh, before, uh, a teacher taught me this. It's, he wanted to say pubic hair, which is a hair that grows you in your private area. No, huh? pubic hair, hair, nice. But he said it's public hair. And for a long time, I thought it was a public hair. Yeah, public hair, it makes sense, why? Because everyone have this hair. You know, in the private area, they all have hair. So I thought it was public hair. I kept going for some time. But when I think about it, also your armpit hair, everybody have it. So what makes this one different? I didn't know. So uh, I did my research and I found that it was pubic hair. And this makes more sense because pubic means puberty. So you start growing these hairs as you get older. So I'm like, whoa, okay, it's pubic hair. It's not, it's not public hair. <laughs> it's pubic hair. It's not public hair. So I've had it wrong this whole time. So things like that happen. So quick story. Uh, when I heard mouse to feed, I thought it was mouse to feed. So this guy gives food for rats. So mouse to feed, but no, mouths to feed. Okay. So if you want to ask someone how many people he supports or he provides for, you can just say, how many mouths do you feed? Or how many mouths do you have to feed? How many mouths do you have to feed? Something to something. Usually we put have in front of it. So I have mouths to feed. Uh, this is the structure, okay? Uh, there are bills and they need to get paid. Structure, I have what? Bills to pay. I have bills to pay. If I'm a teacher and there are classes I need to teach, I can say I have classes to teach. So this is the same structure, okay? I have mouths to feed. How many mouths do you have to feed? Tell me in the comments. I have this many mouths 
to feed. The first one, to say that you have a lot of responsibility, just say, I have mouths to feed, and you'll sound more natural. All right, second one, ask permission from work because you're sick. Ask permission for work because you're sick. Let's say your brother is sick and he has work to do. So he's telling you, oh, I'm not feeling so well today. I don't know what I'm going to do about my job. And you're telling him, why don't you call and tell them that you're sick and ask permission. Wow, this is long. Why don't you call and tell them that you're sick and ask permission. This is, this is a long sentence. Why don't you call and tell them that you're sick and then ask permission? Okay, it does the job. This is how a foreigner or someone who speaks English as a second language would forward this message. But they have this phrase of verbs. Call, not the. Call and sick. Call and sick. Yeah, why don't you call and sick? That's it. To call and sick mean to call and inform people, especially at the workplace, tell them that you're not going today. That's it. All right, so example time. Let's say you are at the workplace and boom, 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 the phone rang and John told you he would not be coming that day. So a few minutes later, another colleague came and he asked you, hey, where is John? What are you saying? He called and he said that he's not coming because he's sick. No, simply at ED and say, he called it sick. John called it sick, by the way. Really? Yeah. You see, let's see what it means though. He came in. He came in, right? He's in. Where? At the workplace. Through what? Through his calls, right? He came in through his call and then he said he's sick. So he called in sick, saying that he's sick. Yeah, to call in sick means to call and ask for permission at workplace. That's it. Parkins called in sick. Uh, but only when you're sick. Otherwise, you just call and you take the day off. He asked the day off. He took the day off. Where's John today? I don't know. I think he has something to do. He took the day off. Yep. Call in sick. So, so far, how many do we have? How many do we have? We have two. The first one is to say that you have a lot of people to support. What do you say? Huh? I have mouth to feed. To feed is to put food on someone's mouth, in someone's mouth, right? So I have mouth to feed. I have a lot of responsibility. Uh, I have a lot of people's support. Uh, I was sick yesterday. So because of that, I called. My call got in my workplace. I called in and just when I got in, I told them I'm sick. So I called in sick. Okay, two. All right, let's move on to the third one. So let's say there is this someone that you respect, huh? you really think highly of this guy, and while you're having a conversation, he made a mistake, small error. It could be a slip of tongue, wrong word, this and that, and he wants to apologize. You know, I get angry so fast. Then you want to tell him it's okay. It's, it's okay to make a mistake. It's not, he's not the first one. So commonly, we say everyone makes mistakes, right? Everyone makes mistakes. This is a common one, but they could say this. It happens to the best of us. It happens to the best of us. 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 Us means we, right? We is a subjective pronoun. Us is the objective pronoun. So us, us. When I say we, I'm talking about him and myself. So best. So when you say it happens to the best of us, you're saying you and I are best. Huh? We are very good people. It's not that we don't know. It's not that we're not good enough. But these kind of things just happen, okay? I mean, uh, I don't know how to spell right. Sometimes I mess up words. It happens to the best of us. You know, people that are smart and that are really, really good tend to make this mistake. So this is a smart mistake. Don't worry. Don't feel bad because you made this mistake. Okay? It, you, don't, you didn't make this mistake because you're not good enough. So it happens to the best of us. It's okay. Everyone makes a mistake. The fact that you made this mistake doesn't make me look at you or think any less of you. Okay? It happens to the best of us. Okay? It happens to the best of us. Guys, man, yesterday I just, I did something so wrong. Really, yeah, what did you do? I did this, it's, man, it's okay. It happens to the best of us, okay? It's okay. Don't feel bad about what you did. Everyone makes a mistake from now, from now on. It happens to the best of us. 
We got it? Nice. Okay, so far we have three. The first one, you have a lot of responsibility. People to support. I have mouths to feed. Very good. Nice. Second one, to ask permission at your workplace. Ah, you call it sick. Third one, mistake happens, but it's okay. Yeah, it happens to what people? The best of us. It happens to the best of us. Nice. All right, the fourth one. You're a human, so sometimes you have negative emotions or feelings. Imagine you're angry. Mm -hmm. What happens? There's something boiling down your stomach, and then you want to remove that feeling. You want to get rid of it. So to say to get rid of negative feelings or emotions, there is one good expression. It says blow off some steam. If you want, some could be out. Blow off steam or blow off some steam. So what is steam? What is steam? When you have boiling water, what comes up, what evaporates, it's called steam, right? So if you, if you are very angry, you imagine that there is a steam the boiling, there is the water is boiling, and your, your body is full of steam, huh? and you're angry, and whew, you want to blow it. To blow is to breathe with your mouth. If you do this, you're blowing your nose, okay? You're blowing through your nose. Right? So if someone has something in his nose sticking out, you can tell, hey man, blow off your nose. Do that, okay? So, if you say blow off some steam, it means to get rid of your negative feelings. Do you know what I do? When I'm angry or when I want to remove my negative feelings, I go for a walk. So, I go for a walk to blow off some steam. Huh? Uh, I like reading books to blow off some steam. I listen to music to blow off steam. So, what do you guys do to blow off steam? You gotta tell me now. Isn't it better? It's so expressive you know you can see the anger boiling down in your stomach and then evaporating and then and then it goes out so blow off steam get rid of negative feelings so I was about to go blow off some steam so far we have one two three four the first one to have responsibility to have mouths to feed very good the second one to be sick and call to your office and tell them that you will not be coming you Call in sick. The third one, it's okay, everyone makes a mistake. You're a best man, you're a very, very good person, and it doesn't matter that you made this mistake. It happens to the best of us. The fourth one, to get rid of negative feelings and emotions, to blow off some steam. The fifth one, you actually know this one, so I don't have to say much. So it says, uh, I was just talking about you. Well, so you're sitting down and you're talking about your friend, maybe George this time. So when you talk about George, he just came. So you say, oh man, speaking of the devil, uh, I know you know this, but I wanna explain and show you what, how it came to be. Uh, speaking of, we say speaking of something when we're having a conversation with someone and what he says, Huh? What that person says reminds me of something else. It makes me remember other things that are related to what he's saying. Maybe I'm talking to my friend about cars and boom, I remember my car is dirty and it needs to be washed. Speaking of cars, my car is super dirty. Do you know if there is any car wash around here? Okay, speaking of this, huh? Oh, family. Oh, speaking of family, how's your sister? Is she feeling better now? So, speaking of something, while well, you mentioned something. So, you see, you're talking about the devil. Say, speaking of the devil. Speaking of the devil. Why do we have the devil here? So, the devil. I think it's said that when you talk or when you mention the devil's name. Okay, I'm making this video by myself right now and maybe it's not a good idea. But, hey, <laughs> it's on the record at least. Okay, uh, it, it clears up a lot of confusion. So, yeah, yeah, let it be. So, speaking of the devil. So, the devil. Uh, it said that when we mention the devil's name, I said it too many times already, uh, it gets closer to you one step, right? So, when I'm saying, if I say, oh man, how's George doing anyways? Like, yeah, George is doing, blah, blah, blah. and then boom, George came. He's like the devil, you know? Oh my God, I was just talking about you. When I talk about the devil, it comes, and when I talk about you, you came too. So, you and the devil have some sort of similar character, at least in this case. So, speaking of the devil, I was just talking about you and you came. Speaking of the devil, oh gosh, oh, I love it. I speaking of the devil, sometimes when they want to exaggerate it, they can say, speaking of the devil himself, okay? 
Speaking of the devil himself, man, yeah, it means just you were talking about that person. Speak of the devil himself. I knew you know this, but I just want to tell you how it came to be. Okay? Good. So we have five now. The first one, to say you have a lot of responsibility, we say I have mouth to feed. Very good. Second one, if you want to call at workplace and ask for permission, you say call in sick. You call in sick. Third one, uh, if someone makes a mistake and you want to tell him that, it's okay. He's the best guy and what that mistake is not important. It happens to the best of us. Good. It happens to the best of us. Third one, to get rid of your negative and, uh, you know, negative and unwanted feelings and you want to get rid of them, you say, blow off some steam. Very good. The fifth one. If you're talking about someone and he just come, you are speaking of the devil. Very good. Last but not least, I don't think I can do much explanation about this one, but if you want to say I'm in trouble, you can say I'm in a pickle. Uh, I tried to go back and see what it really means. I didn't find much. So yeah, I'm in a pickle means I'm in a trouble. Nora, I'm telling you, I need your help. I'm really in a pickle here. So may God keep you out of a pickle. This is the video for today. I'm, I'm open for suggestions, whatever you guys think, let me know, and we can always do better. Never stop working on your English. Whenever you get the opportunity to practice, seize it. This is Mark English with Abby. With this, I say goodbye now.